You are welcome to Open Heaven's Devotional Commentary, a guide to a close fellowship with God. I am Salam Manager Haruna, your host. We are glad to have you. Hello, good day and thank you for joining us today again. Open Heaven is written by our Father and the Lord, Pastor E. A. Adeboe, the General Overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God. And this commentary is intended to bring insights to God's Word by the help of the Holy Spirit. Today's date is Monday, the 28th day of February 2022, and our topic for today is Who Said What? Part 4. Let us pray. Our Rabbi, the Great Teacher, we bless and magnify your name. We thank you for the gift of your word, and we thank you for blessing us with it daily. Thank you for building us precept upon precept, line upon line. Be exalted in Jesus' name. Father, we've come before you today again that you would furnish us. Speak your word to us today and let it impact our lives. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Praise God. You are welcome back. Our memory verse for today is from the book of Revelation chapter 21 verse 8. Revelation 21 verse 8 reads, But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Revelation 21 verse 8 Our scripture reading for today is from the book of Galatians chapter 5 from verse 19 to verse 21. Galatians chapter 5 verse 19 to 21 reads, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Galatians chapter 5 from verse 19 to 21. God bless the reading of his word in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. The topic of our devotional for today one more time is, Who Said What? Part 4. And in the body of our devotional, we have our Father and the Lord telling us today that the Bible is a sacred document provided by God himself as the approved source of information for man about everything in life. The Bible is called the Word of God because it contains all that God has to say about everything in creation, either visible or invincible. We therefore consult the Bible to know the mind of God on issues of life and eternity. For example, Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27 says, And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. Concerning the judgment, 2 Corinthians 5 verse 10 says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he had done, whether it be good or bad. We are further told in Matthew chapter 25 verse 41, then shall he say unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Mark chapter 9 verse 44 adds, Where their worms dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. These passages speak of hell, a place where those who do not have faith in Christ are sentenced to suffer forever. It is obvious from the behavior and lifestyle of many people that they are not conscious of the reality of hell. So was the case in Bible days. Luke chapter 16 verse 23 says, And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torment, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. By this time, it was too late for the rich man. He then made a passionate appeal for his relatives in Luke chapter 16 verse 27 to 28, saying, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. The rich man's request was flatly refused on the basis that living souls should listen to their prophets and preachers. Hell is real, and everything the Bible says about it is true. Psalm 9 verse 17 tells us that the wicked shall be turned into hell, and all the nations that forget God. Galatians chapter 5 verse 19 to 21 identifies some things that fall under the works of the flesh, things that are sure to take anyone who practices them to hellfire. 
Beloved, keep away from this sinful act to escape the agony that awaits all sinners in hell. May the Lord help you to stay blameless in Jesus' name. And we say a resounding Amen. God bless his word to us today. Hallelujah. The topic of our devotional one more time is Who Said What? Part 4. We have seen the part 1, 2 and 3 of this topic which has tremendously blessed us. In part 1, our Father in the Lord tells us that God is almighty. His words never fail. His promises in him are yea and amen. His word can be taken literally for it. It is guaranteed. We learned in the part 2 of our topic that we must be like the Berean Christians. We must go beyond listening to preachers to begin to search scriptures diligently, taking God's word as our permanent standard for measurement and ensuring to discard whatever does not conform with God's word, which is our standard. In the part 3 of our devotional which we studied yesterday, we learned what God's word has to say about marriage. It tells us that marriage is honorable in all and the bed undefiled. We understood that sexual immorality is both offensive to God and harmful as well to the parties involved. The bed, like we are told, must remain undefiled. Contrary to public opinion, this bed must remain undefiled both before and even in the marriage. God does not take immorality lightly. Hallelujah! Today our Father and the Lord narrows our topic down to the reality of hell. In our very first lesson, which was on Who Said What? Part 1, our Father and the Lord mentioned very importantly that the strength of any statement or promise should be measured based on the identity of the speaker. In today's devotional, which is Who Said What? Part 4, speaking about the reality of hell, God himself confirms this to us that it exists and it is no joke at all. We have heard some people make a joke of hell and say they would offend God so much while on earth so that when they appear before him in his anger, he would throw them over hell so that they could land on the other side of hell, which they believe would be heaven. That is a costly assumption and a terrible mistake to be made. God is not deceived. Every work of unrighteousness will definitely have its reward. We have also heard some people argue and say, God is love. It is not possible for him to punish evildoers for eternity. That is such a costly assumption. Do not forget that God is not only love. He is also righteous and just. He has given us a choice to either choose life or to choose damnation. It is sad to say, however, that men, despite seeing the glaring consequences of living in sin, many still choose to go that way, and as a result, intentionally ignoring the way to eternal rest, and instead choosing the place of gnashing of teeth. From scripture we have several evidences that hell is not just a story, but a reality, a place that actually exists. In Luke chapter 16 we find the story of the rich man and Lazarus. In verse 19, for example, our Lord Jesus speaking there says, There was a certain rich man. He repeats the same thing in verse 20 by saying, And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, telling us that this was a true story. If this never happened, he would not mention that they did. This particular story is different from a parable, because when our Lord Jesus communicates parables, you would often hear him say things like, And the kingdom of heaven is likened to so so and so. But this story is quite different because it clearly points out to us that this was something that actually happened. In other words, men have gone to hell. Men are going right now as we speak, and men would still go to hell if they choose to ignore this warning. I'd also like to draw our attention to something very important in today's devotional, still in the story of the rich man and Lazarus. The rich man, out of the pain and anguish that he was experiencing, mentioned to Father Abraham, that he would like a warning to be sent to his brothers still living on earth. Now the response of Father Abraham is what I want us to pay close attention to. We can find the response in Luke chapter 16 verse 29, where Father Abraham told him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. We can learn from this statement that God intends to teach us, who are still alive, to take caution by the warnings that we have from our preachers and teachers. May God grant us the grace for obedience in Jesus' name. For those who would stick to our Lord Jesus Christ, however, we have good news. In John chapter 14 verse 2, our Lord Jesus tells us, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. 
He says, I go to prepare a place for you. Verse 3 says, And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Heaven is the place to be. Our Lord Jesus has gone ahead of us to prepare a place for us because he intends that we spend eternity together. It is our prayer today that we would not be missing there in Jesus' name. We'd bow our heads now and pray. We'd say, Father, please don't let me ever be a candidate of hell in Jesus' name. Pray this prayer like you have never prayed before. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, help me never to patronize hell. Let me never be a candidate of hell. Grant me the grace to carefully and intentionally avoid all the evil works that take men there in the name of Jesus. Grant us the grace to live in holiness, the grace to live righteously, the grace to deny ourselves of worldly pleasures of sin. We ask that you would grant unto us today, Father. Help us not to think lightly of the reality of hell. We also ask in the name of Jesus that, Father, you would impress upon our hearts the urgency to save men from hell, that would make heaven at last and would take as many as possible along with us. To the glory of your name, in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Our Father in heaven, we are grateful for your word today. We are grateful for this word of warning, that of a truth, hell exists. We ask that you will grant us the grace to do all that it takes never to be found there. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. We have in our Bible in one year reading plan for today to read from the book of Deuteronomy chapter 13 down to chapter 16. Hallelujah. We also want to thank you for joining us today again. Thank you for the sweet time of fellowship. God bless you. If you'd love to speak to someone or to receive updates like this daily, please do well to send a WhatsApp or Telegram message to plus 234 you can do well also to be a blessing to someone today by sharing this with them. As you go forth today, receive the grace to love righteousness in Jesus' name. Have a blessed week ahead. See you tomorrow again and bye for now. Enjoy today's devotional. We'd love to hear from you. Kindly leave a comment. You can connect with us on any of our social media handles attached. God bless you. Have a great day and see you tomorrow.